Hello guys, I want to share with you something concerning leadership or serving, especially in the kingdom of God. Just recently I've been reading from the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus tells his disciples after they get into the debate who's going to be the greatest about the fact that he came on this earth to serve, not to be served. Christian leadership is different than the leadership in the company and the leadership in an organization. In the Christian leadership, Jesus sets a model that's slightly different from the world. Though I appreciate a lot of leadership books and a lot of leadership experts who have a lot to offer human wisdom and wisdom of this age that we can apply and take advantage of. But the whole kingdom of Jesus is slightly different. Well, it's actually completely different. It's upside down kingdom. If you want to be great, you have to become a servant. If you want to live, you have to die. If you want to receive, you have to give. And so it's a completely different kingdom than the kingdoms of this world. And so it's important that we take Jesus and what he teaches concerning serving and concerning leadership in the church. The first thing I want to mention is that Christian leadership is not about leading. Christian leadership in first and foremost is about following. Jesus did not call his disciples to leadership. He called them to followership. I know there's no word like that, but I just we just came up with one. Um, he called them to follow him. And a lot of people, what they, where they get confused or where they get really struggle is that they don't realize that, that it's not about you knowing how to lead, it's you knowing how to follow. If you can't follow God, if you can't follow another leader, if you cannot follow orders, if you cannot follow commands, if you cannot follow suggestions, you can't be a good leader because in Christian leadership, it's about following more than it's about leading. The second component is that Christ is the example Christ likeness leads to servanthood for Jesus did not come to be served but to but to Jesus did not come to be served but to serve so Jesus tells us that to be like Christ is to be like a servant to be like Christ is not just to heal the sick to be like Christ is not just to give prophetic words that are accurate to be like Christ is not just expel demons to be like Christ is to live with this attitude and to live with this mindset of a servant Jesus was not a doormat. Jesus was not simply a person who was allowing people, you know, take advantage of him and all of that. But he was a person who lived his life serving others. One of the greatest examples of that is when he washed his disciples' feet. You know, when he came down on this earth and took on a human form, being God, he didn't deny his divinity in being a man, but he added to his divinity by becoming a man. And so that speaks of humility and that speaks of servanthood. The Old Testament has an amazing example of what it's like to be a servant. When a slave, after a while, when he was, be, when he was able to be released from his master, and that talks about in Exodus chapter 21 verses 1 all the way to verse 6, and then the slave who falls in love with his master. Now a lot of times slavery in those days were people who became slaves because of economical position in their family and they couldn't afford to live on their own. So they submitted themselves as slaves for a season. And then God says that at particular times they were allowed to be released from that slavery and go start their own life. And this slave who was in love with his master, who was in love with his family, he, what he would do is he would actually allow the master to pierce one of his ears and make him a bond servant, meaning a slave for life. And this wasn't forced, this was out of love. And that is really the example of what it means to become, to become a servant leader in the Christian community. It's when you are a bond servant of Jesus Christ, when you are a servant of Jesus for life and you do it out of love, you don't do it because you're told, you're, you don't do it because you're pushed, pressured or manipulated. And so a few things that I want to draw from that is that servanthood is not about slavery. Servanthood, it's a, it's a volunteer thing. We're motivated from within by the love of God. We're not mandated. We are not manipulated. And we are not pressured, guilt-tripped or demanded. It's a choice we make. It's not something that somebody else, nobody can make you into a servant. You can make yourself into a servant by being motivated by the love of God, by the love for God. Secondly is that this servanthood, leadership servanthood, it's not a cult-like. For example, some people become, and this is prevalent in Christian circles today, where we develop cults. Cults, what I mean is that we develop this huge obsession with this person and we're willing to do anything for them. This man of God or this woman of God, 
and that's not what servanthood is about because servanthood is you are Christ-like not cult-like you're not obsessed with an individual God is using you are obsessed with Jesus who died on the cross for you and that is extremely different we're serving in the spirit of him who died for us loves us and today makes intercession for us and we resemble that spirit and we serve in the church we serve in the ministry we might be serving under a pastor who is not known or famous or not even a big church it doesn't matter because we are serving God in the spirit of Jesus Christ there was an instance in book of Revelation it, it honestly one time it was a huge shock for me and also a revelation when John the revelator who spent time with Jesus who knew Jesus encounters this angel what we have to understand is the book of Revelation was given to John through an angel so from Jesus to John through an angel so the angel of the Lord took John to all of these places explained things to John in book of Revelation 1910 John tries to worship an angel and then again in chapter 22 verse 8 and verse 9 he tries to worship an angel again now John knew better like that's a blasphemy that's wrong to worship an angel angel is a created being and John who knew that Jesus is God he knew that angel is not God he tries to worship him and I'm reading that and I'm like how could you John but honestly how many times we find ourselves in very similar shoes which sense when somebody presents a message when somebody is used so powerfully by God their ministry is majestic their message is marvelous that honestly we get intoxicated we get so distracted from the main person who sent that message Jesus Christ we get so wrapped up in the messenger that we forget it's about the one that sent that message Jesus and the message itself the message can be so powerful the miracles can be so powerful the ministry can be so powerful that the recipients can fall in love and actually idolize the messenger we can fall prey to that in fact a lot of us are guilty of making anointed men of God into idols a lot of us are guilty of making them into celebrities making them into something God never intended them to be because the message they carry is so powerful and so marvelous that we can actually develop a cult out of following them instead of falling in love with Jesus and I'm not saying not pointing fingers at anybody I'm just letting you know that the danger lies there even John fell trapped to that the message was so glorious the messenger was so powerful but the messenger was simply a UPS guy delivering a package now it doesn't matter if it's UPS FedEx or USPS for those of you living in the United States we don't idolize the delivery person we get excited about the package we must understand every messenger of God every preacher every servant is a delivery person it's about the package not about the messenger we're just the UPS people we are just the FedEx people we are people delivering the message but we should always remember we are not the message we are not the package we are not some big deal Jesus is and his message is and we must be very careful never to slide into allowing people to make us into idols pastors ministers be careful that you don't allow people to worship you now nobody will let that happen but become obsessed with you I love what this angel did he stopped John and said John stop he said I am your fellow servant I love that meaning hey I'm not above you bro I know I'm an angel and I know I got entrusted by Jesus to share this with you but worship God and he points him back to Jesus he points him back to God and then he reminds John I'm your fellow brother I'm your fellow servant I 
I'm just a guy helping you. That's all I am. I'm a servant in this thing. I am not the boss. I am not your Lord. I am not your Savior and I am not your God. The angel reminded John of that. I think sometimes we need to remind people of that and sometimes preachers you need to remind us of that that you're a fellow servant you're not a fellow lord you're not a fellow messiah you're a fellow servant and then we should not as and i want to speak to just people who are in ministry people who are serving today and some of you you need to send this to your pastor send this to somebody that maybe you follow let them just be reminded of that dear pastors listen to me very carefully we have to be very careful not to say that this is my church. Jesus said concerning the local church and the universal church, He said, I will build my church. That means the church doesn't belong to you. That means the church doesn't belong to a pastor, apostle or evangelist. I know we don't mean it when we say that but after a while if you say that it's your church you're gonna have to suffer for it. You're gonna have to build it and you're gonna have to be making sure it lasts but Jesus says it's my church I will build it and gates of hell will not prevail against it when we get that revelation that it's not my church we don't have to build it God begins to increase it God begins to grow it and when it grows we don't get the credit Jesus does and when it doesn't grow we don't walk around like we're total losers because it is his church he's building and it, it is his church he owns this church I don't own the church I'm just part of the team you know as something started to happen even in even within me because I've noticed the hungry Jen and Vlad you know was kind of like the same and I started to stepping down more and allowing other men and women in my team minister and pastor really started to encourage me he says don't become the belly button of hungry Jen it's not about you Vlad it's about the ministry it's about the people it's about Jesus it's about the team it's about raising other people. If the pastor is the big shot and big guy, all the devil has to do to take down the ministry is take out the big guy in charge. But there's only one guy that's in charge. There's only one big shot that's in charge. His name is Jesus. His name is not the pastor. Church will live without the pastor. Church has existed before the pastor came on the scene and church will continue to thrive and prevail without the local pastor. Now I believe in the ministry of the pastor. Don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing or taking shots at any pastors. What I'm saying is that we have to be careful that we don't say my, I will build and then I will make it last. We don't do that. Jesus does that. Another thing is that if you're in ministry, if you're a servant, flee celebrity status. And pursue simplicity embrace simplicity now I'm just gonna speak to the choir okay I'm gonna speak to, to myself and to people who are maybe in my position God didn't call us to be influencers God did not call us to become popular God called us to be faithful and so practically how could we do that so one of them we can do that it is honestly we have to see worship not as a portion of the service that we get to skip worship is our identity worship is not a segment in the service worship is not a prep for the main event a lot of pastors a lot of servants of God they have start skipping worship as though it is something that is done by the worship team how dare you come on worship is not what you do worship is who you are preaching you won't do preaching in heaven but you'll do worship in heaven now I understand and I'm not against you know if you're spending time in the office and you're praying through the service and walking in just to preach I'm not against that but if people are chatting in the office in the this thing called green room you know eating hanging out laughing and they're skipping waiting for the worship to be done so they can come out and be a big shot like to me I think that's already embracing a celebrity status why because then we're treating worship like a concert and like a show like hey this is just a prerequisite until I come out I think God wants to deliver us from that and God wants to bring the simplicity of the every of us being like the average guy average guy and realizing that just because God has anointed me just because God has called me it doesn't make me special it does not make me a celebrity and I don't skip worship another thing is we should not fall in love with green rooms green room is this thing where they do with the pastors come and fellowship and that has its purpose don't get me wrong where you know you can get a little bit of fresh refreshments kind of walk away from the busyness but we made an idol out of green rooms everybody has green rooms now people don't even service is not even over pastors cannot even stay to say hi to people they have to quickly hide in the green rooms now I understand if the conference is humongous thousands of people but most of the places now have green rooms where there's less than a hundred people 
and pastors is, is, are not even seen. The, and these young guys that are rising up who are listening to me right now and you're following that pattern, you're following that trap. It's not scriptural. It's not biblical. It's not servant lie. God wants you to be a person that is around people. You are not just a shepherd. You are a sheep. I'm not against green rooms but don't make them into some kind of a prison where you can't fulfill your calling by loving on people, being with people. Oh people are a distraction. They are not. They are your focus. People are what people Jesus died for. I remember one time you know I was in in one ministry. It was, it was a pretty large service and right after the service you know another thing is security. Security was rushing me. Hey we, we gotta go to the green room and I said wait hold on. I want to talk to people. I want to pray for people. I want to well you know th there are important people waiting for you in the green room. Yes but so are the important people who are right here in the service. We have to be really careful that we don't fall into the trap of green room security and skipping worship because all of that carries this notion I am above people. I am more important than people. I am more special. You know, I just gave so much of myself. I minister so much and I really deserve that break. Come on. I love what Jesus did. You know, he would dismiss people and go spend time with his father in the green room, you know. And so this, this whole notion that we developed in the ministry today, we just have to be very careful. And I know for those of you listening from the West, from maybe outside of the United States, there's also that, that thing, it, it follows people there as well. I've been to Africa. I've been to other places where some of the ministers, literally, the church is very small and, and he walks around like he's a king of the universe. And same thing happens in the United States. I'm not bashing anybody because I'm as guilty of this as anybody else. And I'm just sharing this with something that's on my heart right now concerning myself, concerning our team and concerning the ministers that is watching there. God is raising servants with the anointing that is going to shake the world. But please understand God does not give that anointing to somebody who doesn't carry the nature of Jesus Christ. And that nature is servanthood. That nature, we're not CEOs, we are not celebrities, we are not influencers we might have huge influence God might entrust us with great influence online and all around the world but that does not make us into celebrities or CEOs we are Christians we are followers of Jesus and we are servants of the people in Jesus name amen somebody say amen and the last thing I want to drop here is that in order to maintain the servant like spirit not only we follow Jesus not only we're bond servants of Jesus not only we, we you know this is not slavery somebody makes us to do it this is not us trying to develop some kind of a cult of obsession with an individual this is us realizing that the message of Jesus is powerful but the messenger of Jesus is is not the one we should idolize and we should flee the, the celebrity kind of a system. We should change our vocabularies from calling ministry my own to calling it, you know, it's something that belongs to Jesus. But the last thing that I believe this is huge, this is a big deal breaker, is to stay submissive to somebody in your life. One of the reasons people lose the servant attitude is when they walk away from submission and honor to authority. And I'm not talking about somebody over the ocean whom you call your spiritual father and whom you send money you know who actually you never says anything never corrects you never realigns actually doesn't even know where you live never been in your house you know doesn't see you up close I'm not talking about those kind of submissions okay because that that's not that's not the kind of submission that's going to change your life I'm talking about staying in somebody's shadow I'm talking about living in somebody's shade yeah I'm talking about having an umbrella over you. An umbrella, I mean the covering over you. Where you have a pastor. And a lot of people reach out to me on social media. They're like, Vlad, can you be my pastor? I'm like, dude, you live in, you live in Europe. You live in Africa. Like you can receive spiritually through online. But you should submit to a guy that you go to a church with. Well, but it's a church of 50 people. So what? He can... He can cover you in the sense that he can highlight some good things. He can highlight some bad things. He can cover your blind spots. One of the reasons people get off from the servanthood spirit is when they stop submitting to a pastor they have and they keep chasing a pastor that God never put over them. They keep chasing this celebrity guy who has millions of followers and they're like mentor me as though somehow if he is their mentor it's going to take their life to another level. God will take your life to another level but you have to be humble and you have to be submissive to the pastor God gives you, to the parents God gives you, to the leaders that God puts over you even if you disagree with them at times, even if you might not, even if you feel like you're called to go further. God wants you to be a submissive person. If you're not submissive you, you will not develop a servant-like spirit. 
You will not develop a servant-like heart if you are not submissive. And so I just want to encourage those of you guys that are watching this right now, share this with somebody, share this with your group, with your team. Let them be encouraged today. It's time to go back to the basics. It's time to live a crucified life. It's time to live a spirit-filled life. And it's time to live a servant-like spirit it, a heart. It's time to pick up a towel again and to not live by titles, not to be defined by titles, and to live as people who love Jesus, who love one another, and who embrace this, I am your fellow servant mentality instead of I am above you and I'm better than you. Thank you for watching this video. Click subscribe to the channel. Hey, uh, like the video, L leave your comments. W what is something that stood out to you from this video? I hope that you were blessed. I want to remind you that my wife actually launched a uh, clothing store. It's like a merch store and what I'm wearing is actually anointing it's it's from that store you can help support that by getting merchandise from there. It's also in the link below. God bless you and until next time.